pro-democracy protesters in Hong Kong are calling on supporters to withdraw their money from Hong Kong banks and convert it to U.S. dollars. That is the latest push in a wave of mass demonstrations. They were initially sparked by a controversial extradition bill. Demonstrators have expanded their calls for a more democratic approach to government. The movement is now receiving support from members of the Conservative Political Action Conference here in the U.S. The conservative group joined student protesters, some as young as 12, outside of the Mong Kok police station last week. They also hosted a pop-up CPAC session. Joining us to discuss what's happening in Hong Kong and their involvement in the movement is CPAC Chairman Matt Lap. Mac, welcome back to Rising. Good Great to, to be you, here. Matt. Always awesome. love coming here. Well, I'm glad to have you on TV to talk about something a little bit more substantive here. So tell us about that trip to uh, to Hong Kong and what, what, what you saw while you were on the ground there. Remember when Pope John Paul used to kiss the ground when he got back to America? Yeah. That's how I felt <laughs> when I landed yeah. back in America. Because right. it was a little uh, harrowing. Look, it, it's... Um, this is a fraught situation on the ground. You have these kids, young people, like you said, some as young as 12 have been arrested, um, who are literally standing up for their rights in Hong Kong. And you know, there's, they have 28 years left in their 50-year deal that Margaret Thatcher uh, ironed out. And a lot of the older generation in Hong Kong are telling the kids, hey, you got 28 years, supposedly, of freedom. We'll worry about this in 28 years. I talked to one guy, he was 28 years old. He goes, I can do the math. That means in 28 years, I have no job, no life. I'll probably get sent to a prison camp. Um, you know, and they're going to take our freedoms away step yeah. by step. If we don't fight now, then it'll be too That's late exactly later. Right. And so I just, look, they carry the American flag, as you guys saw over the weekend. They, they quote our founders. They, uh, you know, they, uh, they sing our anthem. They, th this is a 1776 moment for the people of Hong Kong. And what's mm -hmm. happening to the older generation, we went to a train station, too, to be with the protesters. And the older people would walk by the protesters. They were going from one train to the other, carrying their bags and everything. And they would chant, too. So, like, yeah. you can see everybody's in on this thing. Mm. The president's been fairly quiet. Um, with regard to these protests and what's going on there. I mean, what should this administration do? So people have misread this, which is the, the American media is all picking up on this, what Trump should do, why isn't Trump doing anything? When I talked to these protest leaders, and we met with all the, we met with almost every major protest leader since 2014 in the umbrella movement and a lot of these kids. Mm -hmm. And the message to me over and over again is tell President Trump we love him. Mm -hmm. Tell President Trump he's the first American president in you know three decades to stand up to Beijing. They love the fact that he is rattling uh, the communist government in Beijing. So they didn't get specific on doing this or that. The only specific thing that like Andy Chan pointed out specifically is that when we put sanctions on China after Tiananmen, which was a disgrace, a humanitarian mm. disgrace, we gave a carve out to Hong Kong. So basically the government in Beijing is using this carve out with Hong Kong to basically trade all the goods. And what they're saying is what's good for the goose is good for the gander. You shouldn't have a, a carve out for goods going out of Hong Kong. And anybody who's been to the Hong Kong Harbor, as I just did, I mean, it's it's the most happening place yeah. on the globe. Yeah. Well, that's kind and, of why the Chinese government wants to get their hands on there in course. the first place. Now, Matt, tell us a little bit about, I, I know you had, there was a harrowing moment after you had dinner there. Tell us a little bit about the circumstances. Yeah, Jimmy Lai is yeah. a, a guy in his 70s. He's uh, you know, a reputed billionaire, uh, a media mogul, and um, he's putting it all on the line to save his uh, country. And uh, so he invited us over to dinner, which I wouldn't have thought would be a very big deal. I, I was incredibly complimented. I would assume he has these dinners all the time. We showed up and all the kind of communist friendly uh, media outlets were there to film us. And uh, so that was very in your face. And then we went into the house, we had this delightful meal, which was basically a tear soaked meal about Hong Kongers talking about how they could lose everything. And uh, he's, he's a very impressive man. And uh, I left, you know, thinking about Mercy's experience with her parents, with the Castros in Cuba, and her father being jailed as a political prisoner. We all talked about how these kids will probably, they could all get killed. I mean, some of them walk around with their wills in their, um, in their backpacks, and they write the names of their next of kin on their arm, because they, they know one day it's going to come to that. We left the dinner, and uh, the communists firebombed the, his house. And I you know, was woken oh up early God. in the morning. So. Uh, I am happy to be here, but then my heart is kind of tugging because you kind of want to be with these people who are, put, who are putting literally their lives on the line. Mm -hmm. yeah. So President Trump, the message to him was keep up this fight to stop intellectual property theft. 
keep up this fight to, to prevent China from being rewarded for being a rogue actor. Is there a worry, though, that in his uh, desire to make a deal, that part of that is ignoring what they do with Hong Kong? I, I, it, is, it is a strange calculus, and all I can tell you is that American presidents, for almost my whole lifetime, that calculus has resulted in look the other way to human rights abuses in China. And for the very first time, we have a president who is taking them on. And we haven't done that before. Yeah, because he's not talking about human rights abuses, though. He I mean, he's talking leads, about the economic piece, leads, the trade piece. I agree with that. But the human rights part is not the part of the equation. You're right. He never leads with that. But yeah. the fact is, is that because of what he's doing, that is what is inspiring mm. these students to feel like America could have their back. Now, I don't know how all this ends. It could end very poorly. But from their standpoint, they weren't upset that Trump wasn't doing more. They felt like it wasn't breaking through the American media that they feel for the first time somebody is going after the regime is trying to change the status quo, which is exactly what should happen. So we're hearing now from CNBC that the president might be meeting with President Xi Jinping while he's uh, in November on the sidelines of the APAC summit. What do you expect in order to, to the message from the administration? Because I think you have, you have a fair point, which is if you press them on economics, is realistically, that's, I mean, that's what they care about. And you could pressure them, say, hey, you're not going to get any sort of favorable deal here unless we see some progress on the Hong Kong situation. What do you expect? Well, the Hong Kongers want no deal, right? Yeah. So it's not in their interest to get a deal. They want this, they want the recession to come to China. They mm -hmm. believe that economically China is in a much more a fragile state than we realize Hong Kong is as well. If Hong Kong catches a cold, all of China is going to get the flu. So they realize how important it is economically. Most people, most conservatives back here in the country, and although I don't consider this really, we're not talking about conservative versus liberal, this is about American values. Yes. But I think most conservatives would like to see the president get to a deal because we're free traders, we want to see mm. these economic relationships continue. But it is troubling to think that a victim of that could be telling all these kids in Hong Kong, well, you know, maybe your needs and rights didn't kind of rise up to the level. And I think as Americans, uh, we have to take these human rights questions incredibly seriously. I mean, I think it's great we can go into a store and put $10 down and get a, a good that was made in China at a lower price and everything else. There's good to that. But uh, I also want to make sure that China realizes they can't mow down the population of Hong Kong, right. which is what I fear could happen. Well, and we can't have continued race to the bottom, which is what we've had for years in terms of wage, environmental, labor standards, et cetera. Um, this all was sparked by this extradition mm -hmm. bill, but it's really become about it's so much, so much more than that. What did the protesters tell you that they want to see? Well, they have uh, five demands. They want an end to police brutality. They want to make sure that the police are investigated. The What's going on over there with the billy clubs and everything else. By the way, there's some American companies, I believe, who are right. sending these goods to the, the police, which many believe people are just taking their cues from Beijing and the communist regime. Um, so they have five clear demands. They say that this extradition repeal uh, isn't far enough. But just so your listeners and viewers understand, what the extradition bill means is that if you get uh, jailed in Hong Kong for doing some minor infraction, like speaking your mind, right. mm -hmm. going on Twitter. Right. They can haul your rear to Beijing and, the, and your right. family and then will never see off. you yeah. again. And you're gone. Yeah. And so this is, a, this is a pretty serious thing. And look, I think Beijing has played Hong Kong all wrong. Mm -hmm. And I just want everyone to understand, the regime in Beijing is more fragile than we realize. The Soviet Union came collapsing down. These communist regimes can fail. They can also use terrible tactics to hold on to power. I can't predict which way this goes, but America needs to really realize that we are at a moment when there, it actually, if the right things happen, we could see a new government in Beijing. And I know people are going to say, he sounds crazy. <laughs> but I'm telling you, yeah. if the economy goes south and if the destabilization that is occurring in Hong Kong, which is happening in other regions in China, hmm. if it occurs, something great could come out of it. So maybe these kids are starting a chain reaction that can result in actually more freedoms in China. At least that, I would love it if yeah. that would, could be the Certainly result. Certainly possible. Matt, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, you really so much. Glad you. to have you, Matt. Next on Rising, another Democratic convention in a key primary state. Which candidates thrived and who floundered in New Hampshire? Fox News political reporter Paul Steinhauser tells us when Rising continues.